Good morning, everybody. We have a stack of Fallen Empires booster packs from 1994. And we have our Inquest magazine from 1996. So we have eight booster packs that we're gonna take with us to Vegas. Uh, this one box came from a different, this one pack here came from a different box. It has some of the other pack kind of stuck to it. So we're just gonna open up that one today and we'll take the other seven packs with us to Magic Con Las Vegas. We'll leave them there for good luck. Lucky seven, uh, we'll call it, these packs here. And then we'll open up our inquest to page, I don't know what page it is, but it's in here. There's also like Star Trek card prices in here. Um, they have Arabian Nights. It's kind of cool to see the prices of Magic cards in 1996. Uh, a full set of 78 Arabian Nights cards was 675 to $900. Back in the day, there was also a booster box of 60 packs. It used to cost 2,900 to 4,200. And a single booster pack of eight cards of Arabian Nights. That used to be 55 to $70 back in 1996. Pretty crazy that they're um, several hundred dollars nowadays. Um, Juco Hops. Uh, was one of the hottest cards, top 10 of 1996. And this was card number five. Inquest said that when I bite into a York peppermint patty, I get the sensation of a huge tidal wave wiping the playing field clean. No artifacts, no creatures, and no lands. And if you think the Joko Hops is popular now, wait until it starts getting used with the phasing cards in Mirage. Really? So here we go, we're on the Fallen Empires page here, 178 cards, 187 cards, was trading for 40 to $60 back in the day. Put that here, I don't know. I kinda think the price guide videos are some of my favorite. Um, I'll probably, like I said, cut down to two to three videos per week after October once I hit the one year anniversary on YouTube. Uh, but I just really enjoy making videos each day. I'm getting a little bit better, more comfortable narrating pack openings and collection videos. So thanks for watching. Let's open up this pack and see what is inside of this Fallen Empires booster pack. Homerid Warrior was on top. So that is possibly one of the two uncommons. This, the, un, the unlisted commons are worth 10 to 25 cents. So if Hamarid Warrior is not listed, that means this is probably the commons. So that's okay, that's good. That means the two uncommon cards are probably in the back, which is fine. So we'll get a little bit of a surprise today when we open up those. We don't know what's inside. We did not search these packs. Uh, we're gonna bring them to Las Vegas and open them with friends and create some, some cool, exciting content for the channel that way. So please subscribe if you wanna see the rest of these packs being opened in Las Vegas. We also have Feral's Zealot, one colorless, two white. If Feral's Zealot attacks and is not blocked, you may choose to have it deal three damage to a target creature. If you do so, it deals no damage to opponent this turn. It's a two, two townsfolk. Uh, there's Feral Thalid, but this is not one of the uncommon cards. We have Order of Leechburr. This card is pretty good in old school. For two white, it has protection from black, and for two white, it gains plus one, plus zero till the end of turn. Also, for one white, it gains first strike until the end of turn. I've seen that card played many times in old school. Elvish Scout, this is the art by Mark Poole. There were many multiple versions of, many cards in the set that had multiple artworks. This is an elf for one green, and when you pay a green, you can untap a target attacking creature that you control. There is Feral's Zealot. That's that other art for artwork. Same card as this card here, um, but just alternate artwork. Those are the two Feral Zealot. We have Bedallion Soldiers by Richard Keane Ferguson. This is a pretty iconic card. I've seen this card 
as a play mat. You can get those from Richard's booth at conventions for about $40 and he'll sign them. Um, this is pretty cool. It's a one, two, just a merfolk that will get one plus one plus one when you have a Lord of Atlantis in play. Um, so that's the sixth card. I believe the last two are going to be on the price guide list and then will be worth more than 25 cents. Let's see here. Card number five is Aliopile. Yeah. Actually, card number six, but Aliopile is one of our favorite cards. Um, you can play this pretty much in most old school decks for two colorless. It's an artifact. Pay one colorless and tap Aeoli Pile. Sacrifice Aeoli Pile to have it deal two damage to any target. So it's really good. You can kind of just bomb people with damage before they destroy your Aeoli Pile. And you can use the activation effect in instant speed. And the last card in the pack today Maybe we'll do a little screenshot. We'll just do. There's Fallen Empires. We like Fallen Empires. Okay, last card in the pack. Uh, well, actually, let's check the price here. Ailey Pile, one to two dollars in '96. This has actually gone up. I think it's worth more than two dollars now. So that's probably a three to four dollar card. So that's a good hit in the pack. And then the last card that we got is. Fairlight Priest. That is definitely one of the rare Ur cards in the pack. Although, except in 96, it said Fairlight Priest is 10 to 40 cents. So this card may have gone up in 30 years. It is one colorless and two white to cast. It is a cleric, one three, power toughness. Tap a, for every white, um, every colorless mana, it has one white mana to your mana pool. You play this as an interrupt. If more than three colorless mana is spent this way during one turn, you have to bury Fairlight Priest at the end of the turn. So uh, the artwork is really cool by Phil Foglio. There's a priest on there, and I think that must be some sort of Fairlight creature that he is giving mana to. So that's an awesome pack. Thank you for watching this Fallen Empires pack today. We're going to pack up the rest of the packs, take them with us to Las Vegas. Um, we'll open them up in line and see you in some more videos in a couple days. All right, thanks everybody.